Our question for the jury, is marriage an outdated institution? Joining us is Lyle Shelton, National Director of the Family First Party, and Jana Hocking, Dating Advice Columnist at news.com.au. Thank you so much for joining us on the program Pleasure. this evening. <laughs> Lyle, we'll start with you. Why don't you think marriage is an outdated institution, despite those statistics? Yeah, look, I think as a society, we've decided it's certainly not outdated. Even gay people want to get in on the act. And, of course, Albo, the Tory fighter, he's lining up to get married. Um, look, I think if we really care about the next generation as a civilization, I think as we think more deeply about what marriage does, uh, we will want to make sure it's something that we promote in culture and in public policy because it provides uh, th three key benefits. Monogamy, it's two people who come and vow together to not cheat on each other. That's good for themselves and for their mental health. So it's good for the couple. It's good for children. It makes a safe environment for children. If children know that they're in a secure family environment, that is good for them. It provides uh, gender complementarity for kids. Um, children need both the love of their mother and father uh, to socialise them, for them to grow up to be good citizens. And it provides permanence. Um, permanence and stability is key for children and for their development. We know that studies show that uh, up to 87% of uh, youth in detention, in, in jails, uh, come from families where the or, or social situations where they don't have the benefit of uh, a married mother and father in the home. So it's, with the prison population, the youth crime that we're seeing, drugs, teenage pregnancy, all those sort of things can be mitigated by good marriages. Right. Jana, do you agree? Do you think all of those points can only be mitigated if two people are married? I feel like I just stepped back to the 1950s, so thank you for the time walk. I could not disagree more. Mm -hmm. As someone who's come through divorce, but from a family who stayed together for the kids. I can tell you that just because a man and a wife is married doesn't mean that's a safe home or it's a comfortable home or they're not going to school deeply traumatised from the fights they've seen the night before. Or we think that marriages that stay together because of the rights of the family, because that's what we're told to do, because society tells us we need to stay married. We said our vows, our vows which are deeply toxic, deeply sexist, we need to stay together. That's keeping families more often than not in really toxic, scary situations. So I don't agree with that. I don't agree with, um, you know, it helping society. No, I think people get married because that's what we're told to do. We're brought up with Cinderella, Snow White, you get married, you have yeah. kids and there are no problems ever. Yeah. We're finding through divorce rates and the decline in marriage that that's simply not the case and that marriage is simply not working. Well, don't 50% of all marriages end up in divorce. But Lyle, do, do you take that point that why do you need to get married, realistically? In, yeah. this, in this modern era, why? Yeah, just because we've had some difficulties in, in recent history uh, with, with marriage, and uh, that doesn't mean we should throw the baby out with the bathwater. And certainly, I would never advocate that anyone stay in a toxic marriage relationship. Of course not. There should be no violence, coercive control, that sort of thing. But we know the statistics show, and, and perhaps, perhaps not in more affluent areas, but certainly where marriage breakdown, it really does affect the lower socioeconomic uh, part of society. Right. Richer people can survive divorces and break up but better, that's not always. Simply not true. But, um, but uh, what we do know is that uh, the statistics show that where people uh, simply cohabitate and don't take the um, the next step to, to make that vow and, and that solemn promise to one another, that if they have children, the chances of them breaking up uh, is five times higher than a married couple. That's well, just what the research and the statistics show. I think a lot of people show. are in de facto relationships. They, they are. are. They are. Oh. And that's another reason why marriage is so outdated, because de facto you just have to live together for two years. And and you, and you can say all right. the rules. But let's look at but, the but, but vows. But the statistics show no, no, if you no, do no. that, though, that you're, the chances of you breaking sorry, up sorry, before the child is, is yeah. three years old... Jana, um, look, you can throw what do you think? labels uh, well, around, Jana. But, but you just I... interrupted me when I was talking and you were thrown to me. <laughs> Jana, what do you think about yeah. that? I think let's look at the vows for a second. They are for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, love, cherish and obey. This was a mar Marriage was designed for men to carry on their lineage. That's, that's facts. There's no denying that. Marriage was also created because women weren't allowed to have jobs. Women weren't allowed their own finances. They weren't allowed to start bank accounts. Yes, marriage was needed back then. Yes, families were needed back then. Men did find it super important to keep their last name going. And we find that in the vows. Like the, nine times out of ten, the woman takes the man's last name. Mm. 
that is, you say it now and it is deeply outdated, mm. but you say, no, 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 but don't stay in the marriage if it's, you know, dangerous or unhealthy. But why are we saying these vows then? Because these vows mean nothing, I, and I wanna, that's what a marriage I, is. I, I want to go to the jury, well, see how that they're feeling uh, about this. Lily and Hugo in the middle there, you're actually engaged. C congratulations. So, Lily, you don't believe then that it's an outdated institution getting married? I don't think at all. I think it's a lovely thing for a couple to do um, to show their commitment to one another. Um, we're definitely traditional in our way of thinking, so I suppose that also adds to it. But I don't think it would change much for us. Mm -hmm. But it's that principle of commitment to each other. Yeah, it's yeah. that, it's that yeah. solemn it's symbol, that, exactly. the, the gesture. Yeah. Uh, David, what? Uh, sorry, Andrew, what's been your experience with oh. marriage? Look, I um, I obviously married my ex-wife in 2014. You know, to the exclusion of all others. But you know, as time goes, kids come in, things change, people get unhappy, and then the decision was made, obviously, to separate and then go through the proceedings. So. For me, marriage was quite an institution. You know, we got a church, marriage, all those sorts of things. But at the end of the day, if people are unhappy and there's a push to try to keep you together from the outside, that's not going to work. And obviously, we've parted ways mutually. It's been OK since then, but that's been my experience with yeah. it. I mean, I wouldn't force anything on another person. But no. again, if people want to get married, that's very much their choice. All the best to them, absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, look, we're going to throw it to the jury now and get their verdict. You've both had your say. Jurors, the question is, is marriage an outdated institution? Time is up. What is the jury's verdict? Okay, we've got two yeses and the rest of you voted no, so the majority of you say that no, marriage is not an outdated institution. Cassandra, why no? Um, I just think it's it's a commitment for people. Um, I know that there are lots of de facto's. Also, I do take issue because the thing is, uh, Jana, Jana, Jana. Um, from a Jewish perspective, our vows are different. So, you know, people get married in all cultures, and they have for thousands upon thousands of years. So, I think it's just a way of of it's a commitment not just between the two people but also for society mm -hmm. which is why i support you know gay men getting married yeah. and gay and gay women J Jana, what, what, what do you why does that? it have to be marriage and when you look at what marriage stands for in history but it... i don't see that for me and for people i know religious and non-religious people it is a commitment you don't have to be religious mm -hmm. to so want to get married so why does it have to be marriage why can't you have a civil ceremony or why can you but not that commit is a form to each of marriage other? it is a form of commitment yeah. so but but going before so you a want judge a or whatever you don't necessarily like what marriage stands for which in its well i think marriage personally for me stands for good things and mm -hmm. sure not all marriages will work out and certainly in my culture, divorce is, you know, Time. allowed, mm -hmm. uh, always has been. So there's no um, yeah. uh, black mark against somebody because they're divorced. Yeah. But um, okay. no, no, but whether you, you doesn't right. matter if you go before a priest or a judge, it's a commitment. Yeah. Well, it's interesting those statistics say that not many people are saying I do, but uh, yet they, obviously it still means a lot to some people. So and that's absolutely fair enough. Jana Hocking and Lyle Shelton, great to be with you this evening. Thank you so much Thanks for joining much. us.